Right, uh, we are. Hang on a minute. Okay, okay. Now what? Now what did you say? Uh, you're going to have to invite Mick. Uh, I can't. Uh, oh, I don't right. have him on Steam. Oh. Okay, let me invite him. There you go. Adam, uh, where, where's the? Where, what's mm -hmm. the? Link? Can you post the link to Chocolate Hammer channel? Like what's? Yeah, we'll do. Oh, um, to the the channel. Yeah, www.livestream.com backslash chocolate hammer. Right. And I actually see the stream just fine. Okay, have you post? Yeah, you can post it now. Uh, join us on the. Will do. And to anybody watching this in the future, hello from the past. <laughs> hmm. All right, published. Oh no, we wait. Oh, here we go, one. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, that's unprofessional. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, this might actually uh, have the more viewers because we have, uh, like, I think it might be easier for, like, people in America to uh, wake up to this time as opposed to the earlier time. Mm -hmm. Best part of waking up is a stream to some video game being made by any designer. <laughs> Where we, we also have more stuff this time. Yeah. Yeah. No. This is. This will be certainly more interesting. Man. Okay. The website stuff is on as well. Yeah. Actually. Uh, yeah. The website has also been slightly updated and stuff. So yeah, I guess that's something. Uh, do we have viewers? Like, do we have viewers? Hi, viewers. What's up? Four viewers. We have four viewers, which I think are us. <laughs> yeah, I'm not actually uh, watching this because, yeah, that would that would be awkward if I were to watch this. But yeah, let me try to. I'm I'm linking it from Twitter. Wait, this chat has the words racist Ken Levine in it, so yeah. Pretend you did not see that. So it does not affect my <laughs> Racist Ken Levine? Yeah. So pretend you did not see that, so it doesn't affect my prospects of the of employment in like future game industry prospects. You weren't calling Ken Levine racist, you were just yeah, just double checking that he wasn't. Confirming yeah. your deeply yeah. held belief that Ken Levine is an awesome guy with yeah. no problems. Whatsoever. It was like yeah, it was like an alternate universe version of Ken Levine where everyone is racist. Like multiple timelines <laughs> and stuff, you know. <laughs> but there was one extremely racist evil Ken Levine and like another game designer Ken Levine came through and murdered him. I had to go back in time to kill myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, so by so while we're waiting for like uh, the bunch of backers to show up, hey guys, look at the new options menu. It's pretty cool. It has options in it, and we also have controllers. It's pretty sick. Whoa. You can be like, hey, this game, not not using the right controller. I want another one. <laughs> or you can be like, you know, vertical sync. That's something I need in my life desperately. Or, you know, this vertical sync is really cramping my style. I want to. I don't know what a vertical sync does. I'm not a graphics designer. It locks the frame at 60 to 30 FPS. Uh, like no, like uh, what it does is it locks your frame rate to uh, like the frame rate of your monitor, so it doesn't uh, like tear, like cause screen tearing and such. 
It's basically yeah. It's a brute force solution for screen sharing. Oh, this is the work in progress help menu, and this is the mod menu. Oh yeah, actually I completely forgot about this hotel. Uh, we also have uh, level previews in now. So what you can see here is that uh, like uh, if if you go to the load menu and you have a bunch of games to load, uh, you have level previews now. Hot saving and loading the game action. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's actually uh, loading. Yeah, it's actually loading some part of the game as opposed to all of it. So it's like it's like loading within a loading kind of thing. If that makes any sense. But yeah. Loadception. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I uh, say so th these are a bunch of convenience features. Like obviously they are not like you know game breaking kind of thing. But but I think it's nice because uh, like usually when I uh, I'm playing some RPGs, often like for example Game of Thrones RPG, which is like I don't know who called that RPG, but whatever. So so yeah. So uh, these these are the kind of minor things which I think really help. Uh, oh, improve the overall experience for example if you can see the visual uh, screenshot of the level you are in i think that helps and then there's the exact time and like a bunch of information about it before you have loaded the stuff mm -hmm. and then time played time yeah it's it much more a system of the uh, gold 90s than the like terrible safe systems we had in some games today yeah if they exist at all so yeah, uh, to our viewers, uh, these are the new slum levels which we have. Uh, can any of you guys actually hear Ratskarn and like uh, Mick and? They should be able to Ross? certainly. Yeah, yeah. If you if you can, uh, nobody yeah. Nobody hear me. <laughs> yeah, if you can't, uh, let let me know, and I I might actually uh, like change a bunch of settings and stuff like that. Can you hear me, Slam? It's three dog. Ow! <laughs> yeah. He's going to be killing himself. <laughs> you know, I actually didn't mind three dog when that first time I played it. It was only when I played it with Josh that I came to load him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the first time actually, I, yeah, I think that's a kind of a thing with Fallout Three in general. I think because like the first time you like when when it actually came out, the first time you played it, you were like, oh my god, Fallout is back, and you were willing to settle for like. Uh, anything basically. That resembles the first you part of the awestruck. Awestruck. Yeah, you were uh, yeah, awestruck, just... yeah. And then when uh, like, you when you actually stop and take a look at it, you realize that there's a lot of problems with the narrative yeah. and the setting. And that it doesn't really fit the cohesive whole. For everybody's first reactions, look up the gun show comic McRib is back and replace McRib with Fallout and you've got pretty much <laughs> the visceral reaction of longtime fans of the series. Yeah. And I think that's that's pretty much the same thing that happened with Skyrim. Like the initial reaction in like one week, like in the first week, on like on uh, review sites, on Reddit, on like 4chan or whatever, any place, it was like purely positive stuff. But then people stopped and actually looked behind the veneer, and they were like, mm, "There's not really much of a like choice." And I'm not saying they're bad games as such; like they're pretty good games. But like, you know. Yeah, they you tend to be awestruck and ignore the flaws in the game. Yeah, in the, the writing I found in Skyrim is like the mixedest mixed bag I've ever seen. So what I'm saying here is that we what we need to do is we need to somehow like set up super deprivation for a video game that doesn't have any predecessors <laughs> and just coast on people expecting it to be awesome. Uh, yeah, I think the hype train also helps. Work. Like, so yeah, uh, yeah, if you can get a like thirty million dollar marketing budget, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> And a few people have been saying we're a little quieter, there's low audio quality. Let me just try turning up my mic on my end. Oh. Alright, that won't do anything for the quality, I'm sorry to say, but I hope mine is okay. Yeah. Same here. Yeah, this, the, yeah, let me actually just switch to window mode because this is kind of like uh, options. Hang on a minute. Change. Microphone Change. boost. Change. This looks dangerous. Let's mess with this. Now at least I can see the comments and like what people are saying. Hey, there you go, guys. Uh, okay. Okay. The uh, lowest, the lowest uh, rate I can boost my microphone by is 10 decibels, and that seems a little overkill. So I'll just have to work with this. Jesus Christ! That's the entire range of my uh, editing software. Yeah. Oh. 
uh, is he more quality just me uh, thanatos so yeah uh, yeah now if you guys have any questions about the game or something uh, yeah now would be a good time yeah. we can feel them yeah give us a best shot I mean, we do these once a month, so you know, yeah. it, it's understandable if we're, we're without, you know, showing any direct gameplay, just showing new environments and new characters. It, it, it's, it's understandable for running to the extent of your curiosity. But you know, the important thing is slums. We have them now. This is actually very important because this is an area we'll be revisiting a lot. Yeah. What day is the maid service scheduled for? Uh, by which I assume you mean playing maid the role playing game. That's every day. Oh no. <laughs> I actually own a copy of that. I won't go into it too much. Uh, suffice it to say, it was a, a gift. A gift in quotations. Yeah. Uh, there's some systems uh, that are good. Friend, quote unquote. Friend. Yeah. <laughs> I take yeah. that in the same way that, that uh, the head at the end of the season was a gift. Okay, so back when I was doing the cherry role-playing marathon, having a game where you could randomly generate the variables uh, is right. actually a kind of a lifesaver. And we didn't have too many of those. Made the role-playing game was one exception. Do I own a pinafore dress? What's um, a pinafore dress? Uh, Okay, so when you think pinafore dress, think like um, it, it's got like the, the waist is cinched up a little below the rib cage, and it's kind of just bells outward. So I don't bring up five shots. I don't know. Yeah, what's the the I don't know. What, what's what's the minimum hem length? At which point you could say it's a pinafore dress. You know, coming at me with, it's really cruel, really cruel of you, Rocketeer, to come at me with a sartorial question when you're talking to the worst dressed man in the United States after sleep deprivation. It's not a, it's not, it's not a field in which I can joust with you uh, to, the high, to my <laughs> highest expectations. Yeah. You, you got him on an off day, yeah. As far as swapping wardrobe advice goes. No, um... <laughs> anyway... Um, so yes, but, any, any questions not related to, uh, women's clothing? Can't believe I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know the next question is going to be, what's the women's clothing like in unrest? Which would actually be a fair question, I think. So yeah, uh, yeah, fair warning actually. Uh, uh, yeah, these uh, yeah these levels don't actually have the uh, NPCs in them yet. Uh, so so actually they will look pretty crowded uh, by the time we are done with them. Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, and yeah, okay, yeah, we have that problem somewhere. showing yeah. this up to somebody. This is not going to be a ghost town or anything. Yeah. Uh, it's very important to establish we're not going to have the New Vegas effect, that this will be stocked with NPCs. Sorry, continue, Marvin. Yeah, uh, right, so I was saying that we also have, uh, like, a bunch of new control schemes in the works, as in we have controller support, and uh, another con uh, another control scheme where you can, like, click to move and stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's also in the works. <laughs> Dress effects. Yeah, we, we will have a, a needlessly tagged on graphics technology that slows the frame rate down to like 20 frames per second for no reason. So yeah, we will definitely have yeah, we need that. that. Yeah. Yeah, we are, we are in contact with NVIDIA to see what, what rate our souls can fetch. Yeah, once we have the rate finalized, I mean, we will have this. <laughs> I mean, the game is just running too fast, I couldn't even see any loading screens on my PC, so we gotta have that. Yeah, like... But how can you benchmark? <laughs> if everything runs well, how can you benchmark? 
Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, how can people make ironic jokes? Like, will it run and rest? Hello, 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 hello. You know, they camp on forums. So we got, we have to like cater to those markets as well. So, well, watch that actually they have the normal like the lowest powered tablets. Uh, wait, stopped? What? By stopped? Are we talking New York Pit? I, I I don't get that. Like, How many people? Oh right. Oh. Uh, well, I'm I'm imagining about uh, I don't know. Uh, it will it would depend, but something like uh, at least ten NPCs uh, in in the in this large area. Uh, obviously, like uh, with oh, yeah. like reskins and such, we we'll, uh, boost the number. But in terms of interaction, oh, yeah. people, maybe six or seven. Yeah, Mick. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I add as much as we can, but uh, there is a certain balance that uh, when you have too many NPCs that don't actually have any quests or any yeah, they, they end lines of dialogue, then it uh, then it feels too much like a game in a bad way. It, it, yeah, it doesn't feel like a mercy world back. anymore. Yeah, this is a good point Mick is making because we don't want you guys to actually, you know, uh, to get to a point where like there's so many people you are just uh, moving and, and pressing talk to each each of them. In case yeah. you miss any quest, it does need to be a kind of um, a visual language to describe like NPCs uh, standing around from quest NPCs. Yeah. Even if it's just how how fancy they look, or what color they're wearing, or where they're twist. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I any of you guys ever go just go down the street and talk to literally everybody you saw? Just like, hey, what's up? What do you know? <laughs> what can you tell me? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. can you tell me about this cake? <laughs> Imagine doing that okay. in the real world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the Speaking of cake, have nobody can see me, so I'm just gonna literally take a huge bite right now. In the most disgusting way possible. You can all imagine it. Um. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Red Sun asks us, uh, will the NPCs have incidental dialogue? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, they'll have yeah. incidental dialogue. We'll have plenty of. I, I mean, I've already written like I, I've I've just written like the for this chapter, uh, the first chapter this is in. Yeah. All I've written is like the um, you know, the main script that has like the side quest and the quest dialogue, and like the basic sort of passerby dialogue. Like we haven't even done the major like minor dialogue pass, and I've still written like twenty lines just for people to sort of just for things people say when you walk by. More than more than twenty, um, surely. Um, that's that's absolutely gonna be a thing we have. We just don't want the player to feel obligated to wade through all of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah actually Because uh, I know, I mean I would feel obligated to do that. I would feel obligated to talk to every single NPC even if I got tired of like okay, yeah I get it. Yeah I get it. Yeah I get it. Gosh. <laughs> Why yeah, am I doing yeah. this? Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the kind problem. of like uh, yeah, yeah. Reason, uh, teaching player response. As in, yeah, like we must do that. Or like, like I'm not satisfied if I haven't actually talked to everyone. And at the same time, I, yeah, like, I, when when I play RPG, I feel I'm, like, compelled to get all the context. Yeah, I get out of making key decisions as soon as possible. So I'll talk to the guy, but not too much, in case I make a key decision that closes off certain avenues. So, so, so I imagine the other guy would be like, uh, I'm like, hey, faction leader, what's up? And he's like, yeah, would you like to know more about our faction? I'm like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And he's, would you like to, no, 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 no. And then I suddenly run away to the other opposite faction and do the same thing with them. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, the problem is the worst for me in The Walking Dead because it really, it didn't make you make do any of the conversations except the important ones. And, you know, every town it was like, hey, do you want to talk to Duck before you leave? And I'm like, do I, though? Do I really want to talk to Duck? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but I feel like I have to. Because somebody wrote that conversation and I want to see it. Yeah. Hmm, I can hardly hear over the mic. Uh, whose mic is it? Like, uh, hang on a second. Let me actually uh, yeah, turn off my fan. Maybe that's what's causing it. Do you want to talk to Miranda? Yes, no. Yeah, maybe no. No. Okay, no, Miranda, fuck Miranda. I wouldn't talk to Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, yeah, uh, yeah, actually, this kind of reminds me of something uh, which I, uh, which you guys might be interested in, is that, 
uh, how we are actually going forward with the game is uh, first we aim to get the ba bare bones levels and like the essential NPCs done and the essential quest lines done so you can play through a skeleton of the game from start to finish hmm, okay, now we should have <laughs> That's really weird. I guess I, I do need to get a better mic. I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah, I'll fix this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what I was saying was that uh, so what I was saying was that uh, what we aim to do with uh, with development is to first have uh, a bunch of like have you played through the basic. Uh, uh, ha like you could, you can play from start to finish in a basic skeleton of a game, and then later uh, we fill the entire world with NPCs and incidental dialogue and some side quests. Yeah, that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, that's that's what. So that's why you guys are like so far, you've only, you've you've seen uh, a bunch of environments and sprites and pretty much. Does this? Hmm, this is interesting. I don't know what this could happen. Hmm. So everyone has gone silent. Are you guys still here or something? Like what's up? Oh, no, we're yeah, still I'm here. Oh. I'm here. I was waiting for some kind of question. Yes, waiting for something to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you guys are looking at the stream, could you tell me if like this change this has changed the kind of? Oh yes, it did. Okay, so I'm trying to get this fit fit the window. Okay, uh, Red Sun has a question. Will the Naga have their own language, and will there be any kind of language barrier? Okay, so then we start talking about English uh, languages. Uh, I'm gonna fall into a tendency of you know any any speaker of any language, which you know anybody. Uh, to refer to just the language that is common to the player characters and the viewpoint characters as English. Obviously, it's not really English, but like that, that might happen by accident. Just heads up. When I say English, I actually mean whatever language they're speaking. Um, whatever language the they're speaking. The common language. Like, yeah. The common tongue, or, you know. Yeah, but, but yeah anyway. We so, should the name for it initially. Just putting that out there. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, it's is supposedly just said in India, so it would actually just be that, but, you know. <laughs> right. Anyway, the Naga do speak their own language, but most of them speak English. In the game script, we'll speak that, because they chose to come to Bimra, and they already sort of, they, they had to know how to tr enough to tr be able to trade and to sort of interact with people. Um, so most of them were semi-fluent, and if they weren't, they quickly became well-versed in anti naga slurs at the very least. Yeah, the lexicon of those. Um, however, Naga do all- the thing is, almost no one in Bimmer actually speaks the Naga tongue. The royal family was educated in it, uh, some of the merchants know it, but, uh, the, the Naga speak their own language, and that is both a huge advantage for Nagas, because, you know, they can communicate with each other and not be understood, and also, it makes people very uneasy, because, you know, these... Imagine you're suddenly... You're, you're in a situation where you need to fight for food, you're starving, oh, yeah. you know, you, you, you hey, things look like they're about to degenerate into all-out warfare, and your threats are populated by hulking, giant monsters with massive teeth who need more food to survive than you do, who can all communicate in a language you don't understand. Honestly, like, we throw around stuff like, oh, fantasy racism, but that's a pretty legitimate concern to have. Yeah, and at the same time... Yeah, obviously they have... should treat the Naga... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, right. Uh, I was saying that at the same time, we do have a bunch of NPCs, uh, incidental ones, that that do actually uh, take into account the language barrier. So, so yeah, it's going to be there, but it's, but it's not going to be, like, a major feature of the game. Mm. 
uh, i was thinking of uh, like particularly that uh, like the uh, kind of the pro human uh, naga scholar i was thinking maybe we could do some fun things like uh, maybe him forgetting the naga tongue i don't know like yeah there's a bunch of room in there and then like a couple of other stuff <laughs> forgetting or trying to unlearn it do foreign languages sound like bar 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 hmm now we don't actually have <laughs> like sounds like voice acting in the game yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I think this, this, this serious though. question is um, when we have foreign languages in game, uh, they just, they're just represented by speaking in Naga tongue. If your character understands the Naga tongue, and if not, it just says the character speaks in the Naga tongue, and you, you're just like, Welp. He's either going to oh. kill me or he's going to take me to lunch. <laughs> it's not just a bunch of brackets with like a bunch of S's between them, just. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen games do that. It is effective. I don't know what the, the phrase for that is. That like writing dialogue as it sounds rather than uh, as it's actually read. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Although I, I should say that the Nagas don't actually hiss um, much. They're, yeah, they're, they're, their uh, speech is actually fairly similar to um, human tongue. Okay. Physiologically, they're physiologically they're, they're they're similar to humans as as far as their their tongues and their uh, vocal cords. Well, that's the other thing I haven't actually seen uh, of yet because I've been placing like placeholders for them the entire time so far. <laughs> Not that I think that'll actually ever come up, incidentally. Like, that's just... Yeah, that that is internal canon. I don't think that'll ever actually be mentioned in-game. That seems an esoteric subject to explore. Yeah, do Draga dance... Maybe it'll be in the codex. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think... Yeah, like the yeah, I think the Red Scan has written a bunch of, like, Bollywood-style dance numbers for the game. So we, we'll get to that <laughs> when it comes here. Yeah. Um, uh, Naga do dance, yes. Um, their dancing mostly involves movement in a space as opposed to movement of the body, but incorporates both. Yeah. Yeah, I do want uh, to have, like, make animate a Naga doing a moonwalk. Yeah. Yeah, that, that won't happen <laughs> in the game. Again, internal canon. <laughs> Uh, did you ever decide what slurs the Naga had for humans? My favorite, I, I think this was Mumbles who suggested this, was Mouse. Uh, yeah. Like, calling humans mice. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that works because, you know, when you think about it, like, a human has about as much in common with a mouse as a Naga has with a snake, and we call them snakes. They probably don't really differentiate mammals terribly well. They're just like, well, yeah. you know, the, Plus, you, you, you're, you've got, you know, big ears, you're small, furry. Look like a mouse to me. Yeah. Plus, I mean, snakes usually eat mice, so it's 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 like their yeah. way of using the naga There's that too, slash, yeah. slash snake visual, uh, like visual relation to intimidate humans in a way because like they are kind of reminding them. But yeah, at the same time, you know, like in the majority of the cases, the humans are actually the dominant kind of thing, so they don't use it very often. In fact, like, the moment they usually start using it is a good time to actually, you know, run the fuck away. Hmm, raptor image, I'm not sure, because I'm not sure if the ancient, like, people had discovered, like, dinosaurs and such. Oh, you mean, like, eagles and, oh. <laughs> the ante are probably the mongooses. That might actually be <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, you guys have any feedback about the whole slums area? Uh, like, from what you've seen so far? Any particular things you like? Any particular 
things you don't like that kind of thing yeah hmm? take any fact, questions yeah. or statements or in fact any questions in general yeah like rocket here come on like like the first you guys asked for elephants and then now it's donkey so it's like like <laughs> Uh, like nose arc all over again. Like soon we'll have like fleas and stuff <laughs> like that. It's like a very slippery slope, you know. Actually, implementing birds would be pretty straightforward. You just have very large elliptical arcs. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have like a stationary model that just you know does these arcs. We don't even really have to like maybe throw in a flap occasionally. Yeah, I mean basically if you want yeah, to implement those are easy a bird in two D. Yeah. You need a standing animation and a fl like flying away animation and like just code it so that whenever you go near it, it just flies away, and then it comes back. I guess when when you're standing there. Yeah. <clears throat> a mud and brick version of home. Hmm. And you of course have the quest. You find some honey and smear it on the ground where the bird lands. The bird comes back and it gets stuck and leaves a feather behind. And he uses the feather to get a library disguise. So you can pass the palace guards. Oh wait, I'm describing King's Quest game. Hmm. Or Gabriel Knight. <laughs> oh man, that Gabriel Knight. I actually saw my mother I, back back when I was like. Ten years old, haha! Ha, always ten years old. Ha. Back back when I was very young, I actually saw my mother trying to solve the puzzle where you, spoiler alert for Gabriel Knight, trick a cat into running through a hole and oh getting God. his fur oh caught on God. a piece of tape. No, like that. There has to be some kind of law. It's, it's like the Godwin's law of adventure gaming. Like you don't reference that cat puzzle, like just ever. <laughs> He's like. Yeah. What was it like syrup packet and then you put it on your face and it counts as like a makeshift mustache? Yeah, for so you can impersonate a guy who, and I, I cannot stress this enough, does not have a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. actually I think uh, the Red, the red Sun asks, the plant life around the slums is a bit sparse. Yeah, that actually comes into play with the whole weather and stuff kind of thing. Yeah, I mean... Uh, like the countryside has has a lot more uh, plants in comparison to this. This might actually be a good time to like switch to the countryside, maybe for you guys. But if you guys have seen it before in the stream, I'll I'll switch it. Yeah, later. I I I thought it would make sense if there are almost no plants there. Basically, only some in the corners, and so because there. Are First of all, the weather is pretty bad, so it's already pretty pretty tough for nature to survive, but also it's people everywhere, so most of the plants get trampled or houses built on them or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. actually another thing about the debris is that uh, if you can see all these, like there's much more debris on the roofs and stuff as compared to the actual streets, because like the streets would be a lot more uh, people uh, moving around and stuff while in in like backyards and stuff like in case if you see this alley and like stuff so there is a lot of debris in there like if you can see this alley uh, on the right hand side which i'm showing you that there's a bit more debris there because it is a less frequented area of the slums whereas in the main kind of uh, uh, road or whatever path you have there's a bit less debris and plants for example, if you see this, uh, there's a bunch of grass, uh, like where, I'm, where I have the mouse pointer. There's a bunch of grass that is overgrown. So yeah, that's the kind of uh, like minor details we're using to uh, kind of signpost to the player as in where they can, can and cannot go. That kind of thing. Yeah, but also to answer Krellen, I think there should be a pile of trash and things lying around because it is actually the slums. They, they might clean it up, but they basically have nowhere to take it or throw it, yeah. because uh, they already are in the cheapest and most, uh, basically the worst place to live in the city. Yeah. Uh, how many NPC models do you have? Uh, uh, 
yeah we currently we haven't drawn any unique npc models for the slums so what you're seeing is just the countryside player sprite for everyone so by the time the next stream goes live we will have a bunch of more sprites for you guys to show uh, this this month was mostly focused on getting the environments done that's why we like there's just uh, just clones of you everywhere so yeah in the in future uh, streams we will have more uh, sprites and such for you guys uh yeah and another thing about the debris i guess is a uh, is like if you have debris in the middle of the levels and such it gets kind of annoying to actually navigate them like that's how i feel anyway because i'm constantly changing direction uh oh you mean like this like like what we have right now two sticks holding up a roof and an angle it's it's currently on the screen i'm not sure if is that what you mean yeah more color is the thing which we are actually uh, like experimenting with a lot i think the final version will definitely have a bit more color than what you see right now Uh, wait a minute. You mean this roof, uh, Krellen? You were saying uh, this one is this what you are talking about? Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, maybe in like future levels or whatever, or like once we actually get the second pass over the art. Yeah, sure. Ah, I see what you mean. Okay. Okay, I see what you mean. Ah, uh, right. Hmm. This area is suddenly. Yeah, I think it's because it's a bit more visually dense compared to the others. Oh right, this right, right. Okay, I get it. Okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff very similar to, uh, like, it's like it's but not, not exactly that, but yeah, maybe we can add that. Yeah, that's not that's going at uh, Arvind. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what? Rose Kern didn't suddenly become Indian. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> that's good to know. I don't have a mirror here, so it could happen. Uh, so yeah, how long have been he live exactly? Okay, for 40 minutes. Okay, yeah, so there's still a bunch of time left. Uh, so yeah, any any questions or uh, yeah yeah we have we know there was scraping yeah there are a bunch of stuff to fix there is a bunch of stuff to fix yet yeah, this is basically the first pass as in we just got this uh, like this level working for like a week earlier. So the idea is to actually get the raw stuff done first and then like slowly uh, like polish it. So yeah, this is, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, this is like super early alpha, like we are not even like what, what games traditionally called alpha yet. This is like super early in development. Yeah, in, in production. Yeah.
there are actual game elements that haven't been put into it yet. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually the debug view if you guys can see it. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, there are a bunch of uh, some collision polygons might be a little rough, and some edges might not be properly defined. But yeah, that is an easy thing to fix. So what you are seeing now is like uh, me colliding against a polygon. No, no, no. Yeah, you you are definitely helping. Yeah, if you're not. Yeah. We're just actually explaining why, like stuff, some stuff is like more rough as usual. Fuck it, it's late here. I don't know. Like it's pretty probably morning over there, but. Mhm. Mm ah. Uh. Yes. Will there be a sprint key? Uh, there will not. No, I, I guess think we, we, you know, we, we have. Sorry, what were we saying? Uh, I mean, there, we will probably tweak the actual player velocity, make it a little bit faster. But yeah, we probably won't have a sprint key. Like the actual mm -hmm. levels, uh, pro part of the reason you are uh, seeing it as a bit slow is because the frame rate is kind of. Uh, a shot. It, it's because, a lot slower than my playtesting. Yeah, because like my uh, like my laptop is this kind of uh, you know like creak a little bit when I'm streaming, but at the same time it's kind of good because like if I can run it on my laptop, you guys can pretty surely run it on your computers. But yeah, don't worry about that. Like. Yeah, once the game is in motion, I will make sure that like walking or across stuff is not annoying or anything. <laughs> yeah, I uh, th to thank us. Yeah, I actually have. A, yeah, I have my laptop was bought in uh, like uh, early 2011, so it's like. Around two, two and a half years old now. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a well kind of. Yeah, what we need to fling medicine behind the curtain. Yeah, that medicine needs to have its frames done correctly. Currently, it's just using the same frame set as the player. But but it doesn't have the same number of frames as the player in itself. So yeah, that's a minor thing to fix actually. No, yeah, we we cannot jump into wells yet. <laughs> yeah, that yeah that comes with the like uh, five dollar well jump DLC, which is like pre-order and stuff. <laughs> if you get it, yeah. If you pre-order the game from GameStop, you get the well jump DLC. <laughs> I was going to go like well in hometown uh, reference, but like, the number of people that would get that, I think, in single digits. <laughs> Anyone who has a play the Toronto RPG. Yeah, yeah, elephant DLC. Yeah, that's definitely on the cards. Yeah. Okay, let's let's switch over to uh, this. Uh, let's switch over to the countryside. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me. This would actually be in editing it in the code and all. So this is me actually modding the game right here. Uh, is this default or XML? Shall we open up? Do I price guys? Do you'll see start off this and just have even poorer than for the uh, the benefit. Yeah, let's, let's it adds an element of immersion. They got the spawn points fixed. Uh, like Ross has the spawn points fixed in the game. 
I haven't added the points to the Darius ones. I could very quickly do that and pretend I I done it before and look. Good. I'm not sure. Let, let me just check if we are. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they they are fixed. So yeah, this is the, like what you're seeing right now. It's like the countryside. Uh, you've probably seen seen a bit of this before. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you probably haven't seen. Yeah, that that actually, part is a. So yeah, the, like now you can probably see a bunch bunch of NPCs and stuff. Yeah, this is still like the, the old NPC, but. So yeah, this is the countryside. So you guys probably see a lot more vegetation over here, and like, yeah. So what what you were like, uh, what you were saying earlier about the vegetation and stuff. So yeah, this is the part where it's like more uh, uh, colorful and like you know uh, has a bit of variety in plants and that kind of thing. And like, and then there's this guy. Uh, I was I was expecting an item, an inventory item, with just a whole bunch of uh, armor. Uh, in the final build, will the NPCs be moving or have any repeated animations? Yeah, they will. uh yeah let me actually tell you about like how the process for the npcs goes so first what we do is we just draw the standing animations for everyone except the player then when we actually uh have this done uh uh then uh, then when we have this done what we do is uh we'll go back and we see when we'll see what uh, that kind of thing uh, like which sprite needs what what kind of animations and then we'll uh, implement those because every animation If you don't want to waste any animations, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy had to be fixed. Yeah, he was sort of becoming a. Yeah, his feelings were getting hurt basically. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is a part where I think we use our hearts. I think this is a part where we use colors really well, like in these stalls. Yeah, this is one of my favorite levels. I quite like the red stalls. Yeah. <laughs> NPCs get kicked for idly. I wish I recorded. No, the first time I got the slums uh, connected together, I had an NPC that started out in a wall and then shot up on top of the roof. And it, the moment you entered the area, it started hawking uh, goods you didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now that the collisions are actually like. effective against npcs it kind of yeah hey there's this floating lady like if you haven't met her already she's an important character you don't actually talk to her because that's like major spoiler territory but yeah Oh wait! Yeah, this is actually the the start of the. We just quickly skip through to avoid spoilers. Yeah, this is kind of the start of the main quest. Yeah, I actually like since I manually inserted myself into other uh, the other level. Uh, yeah, getting going into this level. This is where you're actually supposed to start. So now that I visited this level, that the trigger happened. Yeah, these are like this NPC has a custom animation for her. So like, she's smoking the hookah, that kind of thing. So we will have stuff like this and like walking NPCs stuff like that later. Here's another bunch of NPCs. If you have smoke rings, that would be excellent. Wait, what? Smoke rings. Blowing smoke rings. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that would actually be a pretty cool addition. To have them kind of drift up. Yeah. Should try that. You might actually do that once we get the particle uh, effects done. Yeah, because yeah. then then the smoke rings can sort be sort and randomize. <laughs> Good 
one d six puffs. Yeah, and you can actually expend your level time level up points on her, like get it so that it's like she has more um, a better chance to get produce more things and such. <laughs> Oh yeah, and there's a bunch of working traits here too. I think yeah, check this out. These are what we have as a cross between achievements and uh, like certain RPG abilities. So this is kind of the working trait screen right now. Yeah, Mick has drawn us a bunch of uh, awesome looking graphics right here. So for so for so what these traits do is like like they also inform your character a little bit. And they also provide flavor text, and they also provide some uh, like for the people who play for achievements and stuff. They provide goals to reach, as in to get all these stuff. And like some some traits are mutually exclusive. So they also do they kind have of ethical bonuses as well. Wait, what? Do they have statistical bonuses as well, or is it just a? Uh, no, like uh, traits. Yeah, traits don't have statistical bonuses. Items have statistical bonuses. Okay, so the traits are just for context and uh, yeah, tra yeah, traits are basically uh, like a cross between like the RPG ability kind of thing, but but like only in dialogue. Right. For example, you can check in dialogue if you have a certain trait or not. Both the only child in huge family traits. Yeah, actually, little and yeah. It'd be and interesting to use traits uh, to actually, like, uh, as flag dialogues, you certainly have to have other maybe a little trait that might be neat. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, that you can, uh, uh, like, uh, oh, sorry, I just completely forgot, like. Hmm, I think this is a sign that I'm getting tired. But yeah, uh, so yeah, this is another feature. If you guys haven't seen it already, uh, like interiors and how we do it. Uh, so yeah, this is this is the normal uh, level. Like since the door is slightly open, this means you can go into the house, and this is your house actually. So here you are. This is your mom and this is your dad, and yeah. So this is your house. So this is how we actually load certain interior levels. For example, it would be really awkward to have a loading screen and like st for this small an area in the game. So what we do is we just uh, load it directly inside the existing level. So it's like a level within a level kind of thing. So in that way, it's it's it. You don't have any loading screens. You can quickly uh, like peek inside a level and see who's in who's. Who's not that kind of thing, and you can also just go and talk to them if you want to. I'm not going to because spoilers, but yeah. Hmm. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Mm. Wait, uh, an, an only child can have nephews and nieces, right? Because, uh, like, uh, like your your mom and dad dad might not be the the only child. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but whatever. Yeah, family dad. Like, I could never actually get the hang of like what what family dynamics are supposed to be. But yeah. Yeah, wait a minute. Hang on, I'm trying to grok this. Uh... Yeah, yeah, that lower part of the door is still being worked on. Yeah, yeah, we know about that. Yeah, this this little part here. Yeah, this this will be fixed. Yeah, yeah, that's not a big deal. All right, I think we're running up against um, the allotted time we had for the stream, and it seems like we're we've just about exhausted people's questions. Uh, any last thoughts, anyone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let, yeah. Let's have like uh, uh, like about five five minutes of questions and stuff, and then we can wrap this up.
okay so it seems that uh, okay so it seems that we have uh, okay so it seems that we are done for the day no other questions yeah so yeah uh, thanks for watching and yeah this was unrest and you can like find out more stuff at pyrodactyl.com and yeah see you guys later Bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks.